What would he do differently? He was vice president before. Uh, it was at the Helms of Affairs with um, former President Lucia Gomba Sanjo at that time. And there were a lot of allegations, corruption allegations, hanging, still hanging around his neck as we speak. What exactly will Atiku do differently this time? <laughs> well, Before we get, go into details yes, of I know, I know, some I know. of these allegations, yes. I have them here. No. If anybody says that there are corruption allegations hanging on his neck, it is just speculation. Because he has not... Uh, been convicted by any court of law, any uh, court of competent tradition to say that, oh, yeah, anybody can wake up and make allegations, but it will not be enough. You have to prove, you know, and once it's proved, such a person probably be convicted by the court. Then it stands that this person has been charged for corruption and convicted for sin. Um, having said that, you know, I would like to say that, you know, people talk about uh, global economy, oh, there is problem in the uh, UK, there is problem in Canada. They have not understood the indices or the reasons for which some of these countries are having those problems. Nigeria's case is quite different. And um, only yesterday, or day before yesterday, um, there, there were, the, uh, yesterday, yes, the CBN governor addressed Nigerians and said they were going to change um redesign the narrative redesign a hino. so the problem the, that has pro brought us here is what i call voodoo economics you know there are there are there are allegations by former cbn governor uh Sanu Lamido, that the nigerian government had printed 21 trillion naira into the economy the same allegation was made by the governor of um uh Edo State some years back and uh, do, you, do you believe these allegations because we, are, we can see the symptoms, we can see the effect. You know, some people recently were even comparing Nigeria with Uganda, where I did, I said, go and print uh, the Ghana shillings for me. And that's 20, 21 trillion naira. So this one they are doing is um, maybe an attempt to mop up the naira, you know, as if that is what is causing the problem. The problems that are being faced in Europe have to do with COVID, where there were so many countries that pumped so much money into their economies, trying to say, oh, let us do this one to soften the, the cushion effect of COVID. So by the end of COVID, so to speak, or temporarily as it seemed, you know, there was so much money in those economies. And the simple law of uh, demand and uh, supply, that definitely there will be inflation. No, let's, let's, let's get this straight, because I, I, I do not want us to misinform the public. Yes. Now, you say that um, the economic was in the UK. Who is The UK is assumed to be a developed country. Yes. Uh, is as a result of the post-COVID realities. And now you are isolating Nigeria from the same. Nigeria was also hit by COVID-19. And we are even a developing country. So who says that the same factors that affected the UK could not even hit Nigeria harder than it, than it okay. hit the UK? Okay, now... I don't know how many relief packages you received as BC during the COVID. The, there were there were there were places where some of these things that they call relief uh, materials were piled up. There were there were no Nigerians. In fact, the minister for humanitarian uh, whatever they call it said that during that time that was COVID, they spent almost 500 million to feed Nigerian children. And we're asking where were these children fed? So it, we cannot be saying that we are so affected by COVID because. What the Nigerian government was doing at that time was not something anybody. I, I, as at that time I was, I was in Abuja. There was nowhere they brought things for people for the common men to share. Different from where in civilized or what they call developed countries, people were bringing materials to their doorsteps. Monies was being, monies were being pumped into those economies. So Nigeria cannot, in good conscience claim that it was because of COVID that we have this problem. Let's even assume that there is a problem now that we have identified. Yes. What will Atiku do differently? Exactly. He has explained in his document that he is going to break government monopoly. Where, For example, now in the last few days, there is, um, there is fuel pri uh, crisis. You cannot get fuel to buy. That the, the NNPC, for example, should be privatized. In such a way that there will be modular refineries, there will be places we I don't know during the when these telecommunications first came into Nigeria, I bought Econet for thirty three thousand, but right now it, I don't think lines have been sold that are almost free. That is because there is there is uh, MTN, there is Etel, there is Glow, there is this and that. So you you liberalize, you kind of 
make it possible. The government must take responsibility for creating an enabling environment whereby, if, for example, now if you walk into a bank and you bring a proposal that you want so so amount of money, you will never get. But some other persons will get the same money. And you know, that right now there is uh, what they call parallel market. That is the market that is the market that is, uh, I don't know what they call it now, the forex. That one that if government, um, you know, takes charge for the exchange rate. And San Luis also explained that there are rent seekers, rent, uh, rent seekers in the sense that they just take maybe one million dollars from the central bank and take it to the, at the rate of 400 naira per, per dollar and take it to the uh, parallel market or the one that they call black market and sell for 720 or 700 uh, naira per dollar. Instantly on the same day, they have made about 300 million without lifting a finger. So how do you intend to run an economy that will be effective under that kind of situation? These are the things that Atiku Abubakar is saying is going to address to make it possible. The government, let government face its assignment of creating a enabling environment. Then stimulate, you know, stimulate the, the economy in such a way that it will be able to rise up to the challenges of everybody. Because all this one you are talking about, exchange rate, exchange rate. What affects the ordinary man is that what is the price of Gary in the market? What is the price of uh, Pupuru, like in my place, in the market? How much is a bag of rice going for? But we have seen a government that assembled people that just practice voodoo economics. They are not interested in the, the general laws that govern things. And that is why we are where we are. So I believe very strongly that based on his antecedents, based on what he has been able to do in the past, we have no doubt that uh, Atiku Abubaka will be able to address some of these lingering economic crises that will bring Suko to Nigerians. Okay, one of the issues that Nigerians have been uh, talking about... I don't know about. if I can just tag on, on, on okay, that briefly, economy. Briefly. Yeah. Um, I use an analogy to explain to Nigerians in a more down-to-earth and more re realistic and understandable language. But when you say you want to address the economy, uh, you're talking about agriculture, industrialization, and commerce. That's what the three components are of the economy. Uh, there's a government that came and said they're going to address the economy, but we seem to be worse off seven years later. But the point of the matter is this. Your question is, how will Atiku do it? When you are going to a doctor's surgery because you're a uh, 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 clinic because you're ill, you don't ask him his religion, uh, he, he, his political party. You go there because you believe he's going to make you well. When you take a taxi from uh, the center of, uh, of Akure and you come to Adaba, you don't ask his political party or, or his religion. You, you, you enter because you believe he has a competency to get you to your destination. Everybody needs to look at the documents of the political parties and say to themselves, what these people are saying about the economy, is it real? Can they do it? Is it achievable? Agriculture, will there be more food? Can we sustain ourselves? How are we going to get the farms working again? Industrialization, it, they say big words. They say big industries. No, small scale industries that will feed you and I and provide a living for every household. How is Atiku going to do that? In terms of the commerce, in terms of the businesses, what incentives are going to be given for small businesses? small to medium scale businesses to actually thrive. That is what will kickstart the economy. I know, again, that you need to look at the antecedents of whoever is contesting and ask yourself, have they done it before? How successful were they? Uh, and in this regard, um, Atiku scores very highly. So it, break it down, make it simple, because that's what Nigerians are interested in. Okay.